Can someone explain to me exactly how to not believe and not not believe at the same time? I don't even know what that looks like. I can't even picture it. Well, since I already have the camera rolling, I'm gonna make another video because why the hell not? And this one is gonna be a response to Bionic Dance. And I like Bionic Dance, I do, but she can be so freaking stubborn on this subject insisting to categorize people into being either atheists or theists. No middle ground, nothing in between at all. You have to have or not have. And it doesn't matter why you have it, it doesn't matter why you don't have it. Either you have it or you don't. On or off, it's gotta be one or the other. There is no middle ground here. There is no gray area, have or don't have. So her video is titled, You Believe or You Don't. And in it, she says, well, basically the same thing as in the title. Is it possible to not have something, but to also not lack it? Is that possible? Is it possible to not be without something and also to not have it at the same time? Because as I see it, that's not possible. That's logically incoherent. I can't even picture what that would look like. She also shows a clip from the atheist experience where Matt Dillahunty makes basically the same argument. And then she asks this. Now what I would love to hear is somebody to make a coherent, rational case for how you can both not have and not lack at the same time. I've happened to watch Biddy's video right after I made my response to Girl Writes What, so I'm gonna borrow my example with John at the door and switch it a little bit. So you hear a knock on the door. If I ask you, do you believe that's John? You can honestly say, I don't know. You see, you are not expecting anybody and you have about 400 real life friends. I know it's hard to imagine 400 friends, but just roll with it, so you just don't have a clue if that's John or not. You don't actually believe it's him, because out of 400 people plus strangers and neighbors and so on, what are the odds, right? But you don't believe it's not him either, because who the fuck knows? Maybe it is him at the door. You are agnostic about the existence of your friend John knocking at your door right now. You may say that you will stop being agnostic about it when and if you will have enough information. Or you may say that you will always be agnostic about it because the person at the door left before you could open. And now you will never have sufficient information for your standards to form a belief one way or another. You're just weird like that. Now, depending on the situation, you may believe that's him because he mentioned he will visit you today. You may believe that's not him because, well, he never stops by and invited. Or maybe you are expecting somebody else. You may be certain it's him because his sister just called you and told you that he's at your door knocking. Or maybe you look through that thing I'm about door thingy and saw it was him. Though there is also the possibility that you are wrong because maybe his sister lied to you or maybe you looked through that thing and hallucinated or otherwise mentally convinced yourself that it is him when it was not. But for all intents and purposes you're certain it's him. Also depending on the information you have you may be certain that's not John at the door because you were just Skyping with him, you saw him, he's in Amsterdam getting ready for a rave. I mean sure under the rule that anything and everything is possible I guess you have to accept the possibility that he could have time traveled through a wormhole and end up knocking at your door 30 seconds after you saw him in Amsterdam. But you know that's just theoretical bullshit with no relevance to the subject and you're certain that can't be him at the door, unless you live in Amsterdam. So Bionic Dance, that's my example for you, otherwise I hope you get to answer the tag on my main channel and to everybody else, stay tuned, see you soon, something something.